What decade is that? 1950s. The 50s. All right, my brother, first word of there. No, the turquoise. To better understand why some people collect black memorabilia, you might want to visit Mark Alexander's classroom. He teaches history at Glenville High School in Cleveland. He's also a collector. I always knew of the items, but in 19, say, late 1988, teaching African-American history here and going into antique shows, I would see some of it. So I just thought that it would be nice to show the kids because in most cases, at that time, I thought the stuff was dwindling and was going to disappear and nobody would ever seen it. I wasn't aware that there were serious collectors at that point. So I bought a couple of pieces and then I just started going to more and more flea markets and antique shows. Bam, let's go, my brother. Let's go. Green side. Come on, you'll get back up there, don't worry. All right, tell the class. Oh, this Central High School, this was a high school at um, that wasn't allowed the little rock nine to get in, but when they got in, but when they got in, um, no, the paper can't hear you. All you gotta do is hold the paper still. Don't look at it, don't just tell the class what you know about. Oh, it wasn't long before Mark found a way to combine his love for teaching with his love for collecting. Is that a uniform? Tell him, talk to him, help him understand what is this portraying. If it is um, horrific, you'll get a reaction. In most cases, students laugh at it. And I think that's just because they're not used to seeing it. And in one point of view, it is funny. But to get past the laughing, what did it mean to people at the time? So in their world, because they don't see it, they can be neutral and say, that's a funny item. But to look at it 50 years ago, it wasn't seen as a funny item. It takes it out of the textbook and gives them something else that they can uh, concretely grab a hold on. On this day, Mark is teaching about civil rights and discrimination. Well, I want them to see that the civil rights movement is not just about demonstrations and marches, that the causes of it, there's a psychological cause. That's why you had to have the, um, the laws to be changed because it's in people's mindset. So what's in society that reinforces stereotypical views and racist ideology that people might not even think about? So the items bring out that uh, information. All right, now, what's that picture of? Black woman serving white. Um, oh, we can't see if you're gonna put that black in front of them. Um, I mean, black woman serving white men pancakes. So what is the implication of that picture? Black serve whites. All right, what kind of pancakes is that? And Jamie's pancakes. Who? Uh, have you ever heard of Auntie Mama pancakes? Nope. No. You never have? Okay, you might not. Now, would they use that picture of Auntie Things like this reinforce the idea that the typical woman is not necessarily attractive on American standards, and American standards at that time is based upon white models of what is pretty and what is desirous. So the creator of this is just buying into the images that were already put into their mind, and the idea that this would probably sell because the public is willing to accept this image as whether it's a comfort or something that they always remember. This is how they have seen African-American women, so I'm more willing to buy this and have this in my house as opposed to a different type of African-American woman. Now, would they use that picture of Aunt Jemima on the box today? Nope. Why not? Because it would be racist. It would seem racist. Well, why didn't it seem racist back then? Because it was normal. Oh, it was normal. All right, get me. Now, what does that picture have to do with what's in your hand? Because she probably holding a broom. Like I'm holding a broom. That's true, but how does that picture relate to the same image that's on the card? Because she probably worked for a white man sweeping the house and stuff. It's like a um, housekeeper or something. But how are they both dressed? Um, and long dresses with towels and stuff. So they're dressed like what? Service. Service. Or Thanks. another word we give an S. They're dressed like slaves. To keep his students interested and to help them learn history, Mark knows he must use every weapon he has. What's the image that's being projected on those items? Only thing black people can do for white people is serve them food. All right, only thing black people can do for white people is serve, all right? Now, how does yours differ from those two? This picture is an advertisement of a mellow fruit gum, and it differs from this picture because it's against the status quo, because uh, it's showing a, a black, beautiful woman uh, advertising something, and it's against the norm because 
mostly um, Caucasian women who do most of the advertising. All right, so there's a distinct difference in the way she's portrayed as opposed to what? Mm -hmm. All right, so where do you think that advertising would have been? It allows students to see something that they might just have read about or something concrete, that's the biggest. I don't think it necessarily makes them more interested in the subject. But if I'm talking about Alexander Graham Bell, then to use an old telephone, then we can you draw discussions on that, how the phone has changed, how technology. So if we're using African American history, I can pull up something from the past and then connect it to get them to think. That's the biggest aspect I try to use.